Hello, everybody. I am Dr. Al Hazari. I'm a retired chemistry professor at the University of Tennessee in Knoxville. And this week is special. It's the National Chemistry Week. Did I say the word chemistry? Yes. I know all my chemistry right here in this book. And when I open this book, first I see fireworks. That's a lot of colorful chemistry. And open this page here. Oh, this chapter is interesting. It talks about molecules. We're going to talk about molecules later. Right now, we're going to go to reactions between molecules. And when we get things together, this is what happens here. We we'll see, oh, that is a nice chemical reaction right there. Whoa. Oh, fire, fire! Let's close the book here. Oh, oh, what happened here? I know what happened. When I closed the book, I think I saw that the fire went out. Hmm. Is this uh, information good for us? Yes. It takes three things for a fire. It takes a fuel, oxygen from the air, and some match of some sort, some lighting. All right. So let's try to do it again here. Let's check out this page about oxidation, burning things, chemical reactions going. So here it goes again. On this page, talks about chem Whoa! That's a lot of reactions here. <laughs> Very good. Well, uh, I wonder how this book is put together. Uh, I wonder if somebody used some glue or adhesive, something to keep the pages together. I wonder. You wonder too? Yes, yes, yes. Well, it just happened that uh, this year's National Chemistry Week, the theme is sticking with chemistry. Talks about glue, talk about adhesives. And in this uh, booklet that the American Chemical Society produced, right here, Celebrating Chemistry, all kinds of interesting information for everybody. Yes, National Chemistry Week is for everybody. American Chemical Society is made up of 165,000 members nationwide. Locally here, the local section or chapter is, uh, is about 700 members. All right, well, all of us are here to celebrate this week with all kinds of activities, all kinds of information to help us stick together. Yes. All right, and talking about types of glues and and, and, and uh, oh wow, making glue from at home. You can do that. Mm, that's pretty neat, I like this booklet. What kind of glue are there out there? Well, you know one or two. Elmer's glue is sitting right here. Elmer's glue right here. How about if you are at school, you probably use a school paste of some sort. I'm just reading from here, this is good stuff. Glue stick, wood glue, those of us who are in building things with wood. Spray glue. Fabric glue, those of us who are doing some clothes or other things, other art stuff. Hot glue, hmm, hot glue, that's an interesting one. Basically, when you heat up this thing, it melts, and when you let it cool, it, dry, it kind of becomes hard again. That's an interesting phase change. It's changing from solid to liquid and liquid back to solid. You know what the first uh, hot glue was way back? 5,000 years ago or more, tar. Some folks discovered that if you heat up tar, tar, like asphalt tar, that's kind of around the same line. <clears throat> if you heat it up, it melts. And when you let it cool, it gets solid again. Are there other kinds of glues? Yes, read up this nice booklet here. You can get it on the web, by the way, from acs.org slash Nash NCW, National Chemistry Week. All right, we have hide glue. Hmm, I guess that you have to hide to get that glue. <laughs> hide and seek, I guess. Dental glue, uh-oh. You know, they glue things in, in your teeth in there. And shellfish glue, all kinds of mussels and oysters have this ability to grab onto the big ships and other places. That's how they, they have chemicals in there. And these, most of these chemicals, by the way, in glues are what we call polymers. Polymers are big molecule. I bet you have some mon mon polymers on you. You have hair. <laughs> That's called protein. Protein is a lot of pieces put together. DNA, you got DNA? 
All right, so far so good. Cotton, say the dose, say the dose, say the dose, say the dose, that's a big cotton. Glucose, glucose, glucose. So it's a repeating unit. And let's see, let me just take one more example. Maybe, you, you know, styrofoam. Mm -hmm. What is that? Styrofoam, like this cup here. Like this cup, polystyrene. What is this? This is styrofoam. It uh, takes styrene, 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 keep putting it together. Molecule, long molecule becomes a polymer. Poly, by the way, means many in Greek. Mer means one. One unit many units. Let me just show you some polymers here quickly. I know I need to get started on this. Okay, so here is a representation of a polymer. And I'm sure some of you have played with these. I've played with these before. I played. These are my <laughs> pop beat here. Yes, these are mine when I was yay small. <laughs> All right. So, but these, as you can see, things are repeating here. And how about this one here? Well, they're repeating in a little different way. Every other one is different, which is interesting. Uh, all right, every other color is the same, actually. Every other one. This is yellow, and then black, leave space, and so on. So this is called air. So as chemists say that these polymers are big molecules. So polyvinyl <coughs> uh, alcohol, polyvinyl acetate. This is polyvinyl acetate right here, for example. Uh, here's another example of that. It's just basically simple. A different color again repeating. This is the same color repeating. These are presentation of polymers. So scientists use models, ways to, to uh, discuss uh, different substances. Okay, before I leave the subject of uh, uh, adhesives, uh, how about cement? Uh, cement, you know, we build this house, this building, this store, etc. This pyramid <laughs> with, 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 the, with some binding material. Binding material. And, and, and this is actually a nice, periodic, it's called a periodic cube. I know you, you can see a little bit about it. It says actually it has a periodic table in the shape of a cube. And it says the cement chemist periodic table. Interesting. Cement chemist. Yes, yes. Concrete, cement. The, uh, are definitely binding materials, adhesive, or at least keeping things together. That's important. All right, so uh, we are gonna uh, do some activities with uh, uh, here. And uh, so we are almost ready, almost ready. But wait, there is more. You mentioned, I mentioned the word polymer, but I didn't show you my favorite polymer here. <laughs> this is a little doll. This looks like a doll to me. Well, what happens if I string up a bunch of dolls here together? What should I call it? And one is called a doll, that's the monomer, one piece. And what should I call this one? Well, how about poly dolly? Doll, dolly, poly means many. That's an interesting way to think of polymers, big molecules. Another uh, way of uh, uh, working with polymers, this is actually, or at least uh, visualizing what polymers are. Look at this bead, a bunch of beads here. They are strung together, and this kind of, uh, we can do some, we can have some fun with this. These are actually called Newton's beads. But let's uh, just think about them as a big molecule, and let us have some fun with them. I'm going to throw this up in the air, and we'll see what happens. Whoa! Wow, that polymer is all over the floor. <laughs> well, I know you like this activity, and you can do this at home, actually, just to get yourself a bunch of beads. And as I want to mention, this is also called Newton's beat. Newton, the first law of motion says something about if a body in motion will go in that direction unless something acts on it. Well, hmm, what is acting? Why is this falling on the ground? I thought if I throw it up in the air, it's going to go through that ceiling and up, up in the sky and never come back. That's Newton. That's Newton says that. A body in motion keeps on going. Hmm. I wonder what is acting on it. Something called gravity, you know that. That's why we're kind of down here, we're not floating in the air. All right, so let's do this one more time, and then we'll take a lesson home in a second. Uh, and here it goes again. I don't know if we can actually see this, but uh, see how much this bead will actually try to go up, and then gravity say, come on down. So it will go down. So it, something acts, is acting on the beads. We know it's gravity. Here it is. Okay, you, you may have cut out a little bit of this going up there, which is pretty good. So, 
Uh, one more, one thing to learn from this is very simple. When you get into the car, buckle up. Why do you want to buckle up? Because Newton says a body in motion will keep on going. What if the car stops suddenly and you're not buckled up? You're going to become, keep on going, and that's not good. So remember this little story. When you go in the car, buckle up. So if, if the driver decides to slow down or stop, you will not be flying. That's pretty good. So let's, let's learn about that. That's good to know. OK, well, that is fun to learn. So where else we got the all kinds of things? Now, you can do this at home. And uh, this is basically <coughs> a bunch of uh, starch. Have you worked with starch? Starch is nice, and some uh, Mr. Zach here, my, my photographer, <laughs> has actually put a bunch of starch packing material, or peanuts they call them, together. Here, I can pull one, and he has done a good job. Look at this, it's holding on. How did we do that? How did you do that, Mr. Zach? By the way, Mr. Zach is a, is a graduate student here in the chemistry department, and he is very creative. He did this little piece of art here, but and then I can do it too, and you can do it too. So here's what you do. Make sure this is not your everyday styrofoam or this kind of packing material. <coughs> you, this is the starch-based one. So you put a little water. So here is a little water. And here is the end of the water. I'm going to put it here. And here you go. One, two, three. So you can do this activity. So adhesive. Uh, gluing together two pieces of starch. Starch is a good, is a good uh, adhesive. Good to keep things together. Okay, so uh, now with the last question I want to talk about right here before I start my uh, <coughs> activities here is to test. What do you think is in here? We, I talked about starch. How do you prove to the world that this is starch? Well, we do a chemical reaction. I have with me iodine here or iodine. Some of you actually have used iodine on your cuts and boo-boos, you know, when you get hurt, or when you go to the hospital, they paint you with iodine, because iodine is a, is a bug killer, is, is a germ killer, and so on. So, and I put iodine on top of um, the Mr. <laughs> Zach's creation. Oh, look what happened here. It turns the color of this thing nice and definitely deep, dark blue color. This means this is starch. So you can do test things at home with a little bit of iodine and water, and uh, you can actually test things like bread. You can test things like uh, marshmallow. You can test potatoes. All these things have starch and any other starch material. Okay. Uh, now on the other hand, if I put the, some of this iodine iodine solution, which is mixing with water. And on the, on the regular uh, styrofoam, you know, like, like the cup, nothing will happen. Well, let's find out here. I know you cannot see it here, but here it is. Not much going on. There's no dark blue in here. All right. Well, that was a nice experiment you can do at home with starch. And talking about starch, some of you know what starch is. This is corn starch right here, corn starch. There are many other brands, but this is, this is great. All right. We shall uh, go on and talk about <coughs> our experiments. Uh, I've been doing uh, this uh, chemistry presentation for the past 30 years in the same auditorium. Can you believe that? This is my 30th annual presentation of the magic of chemistry. Well, chemistry is everywhere. Let's check it out. See what more can we learn together. All right, so we're gonna start with some simple things that I've been doing over the years, and they're fun, and it's great. And we learn something from them. And so we have here a graduated cylinder. All right, this looks like a nice graduated cylinder. It's got a red liquid here. But what, why do we call this a graduated cylinder, you ask? I'm glad you asked. Why do we call it a graduated cylinder? It's very simple. Look at this. This looks like a graduated cylinder. It's a big one. This is grandpa graduated cylinder. <laughs> Good. And when I turn that one around, it looks like it has graduated from school. That's why I call it a graduated cylinder. So learn as much as you can, boys and girls, dads and grandparents, everybody. And you will also graduate from school. Got it. This one graduates from UT. Yes. All right. My favorite place. 
No, this is not why we call this a graduate student. They are just being funny here. But it's okay. It's a lot of fun. You gotta have fun as you learn. That's really very important. Okay. So uh, we don't call. Why do we call it graduate? Because it has markings on it. It has. It tells us how much stuff is there. Markings. On it. Okay. Well, that was funny. All right. So back to my graduate student here. It has a red liquid. Everybody can observe that. Oh, you're not observing. Let me see if you're not observing here. I'm gonna check you all out. Oh boy. You are really doing well there. Keep on observing because you are curious about stuff and you want to learn as much as you can. That's important, that's important. So we are observing that this is a graduate cylinder and it has a red liquid. Uh, what if I pour some blue liquid on top? That's nice. It's gonna be purple, of course. What if I pour some milk on top of that? Well, purple plus white milk this becomes light, light purple. Well, let's do this, but I gotta kind of do something here. Sorry, but uh, my graduate cylinder is here, and I'm gonna just cover it. It's okay with you? I'm just covering it. It's okay. No, but the, the, no, I'm not a magician, by the way. This is not. This is chemistry. But you gotta have some fun with this. Okay, if I were a magician, what would I do? Well, I'll probably put something like this from my pocket. You know, magicians do that all the time. But I'm not a magician. Look at me here. Go away. We not need that. All right, so we just have it covering this. We know that there is a red liquid here, so I'm gonna pour the blue liquid first. So what color do we have so far? I know, how do you know, by the way, I poured all the liquid in there? Well, first, I heard it. Secondly, I saw it. Also, what is this container called? This container is called beaker. Now, some of you know beaker in a little different way. Uh, you know beaker, this is beaker. <laughs> you know beaker? <laughs> nah, this is just fun beaker. Muppet Show beaker, which is fine. All right, but this is our beaker in science, and we, I poured the red liquid, the blue liquid in there, all of it, so I heard it, because I use my senses. Now I'm gonna do the same with the milk. I got milk in here, so here you go. Now, that is nice. So if this is, what I want this to look like magic, what should I do, what should I do? Well, I should, Hold it up in the air and do bring in my magic wand. Yes, this is magic wand is special to me here because my neighbor, yes, two doors down actually, uh, is Harry Potter. He gave me his wand right here. So let's do a little magic here. Now, what do we say together here? Uh, abracadabra? No, 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 no. Focus, focus? No, no, no. We say science or we say chemistry. Let's just say chemistry. So one, two, three, chemistry! And we are expecting a light purple, right? Now you remember that. Light purple is, look at this, light purple. See, all the colors are there, right here. Light, oh, wait a minute. I better get my eyes checked. This is not light purple. This is red, white, and blue. Yes, red, white, and blue. And what is so special about red, white, and blue? Well, you know what's so special. This is, these are the colors of the flag of our country, so yes. The colors of the flag of our country, red, white, and blue. And as you can see here, my National Chemistry Week banner here has red, white, and blue too. Yes, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate by learning. Let's celebrate by having fun. All right, well, that was fun. Let's see what other things we're going to do here together. I, I did mention the word ad adhesive and, 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 and glue, but I didn't show you, I, I didn't talk about reactions a little bit. Reactions. The chemical reactions happen and, and, and things get together and they bond. They bond. So we talk about chemical bonds. There are two kinds of chemical bonds. Uh, uh, and, and, and I want to just get an idea, get you, get you an idea of, of how substances get together. Here is a substance right here, all alone. Here is another substance here alone. And as they approach each other here, uh, a, a, a an attraction happens of some sort and and they finally bond ooh it's kind of a silly representation of a chemistry uh, of, of a bonding or attraction uh, or formation of a compound but but it's a good one I like it so it is an atom all by itself an atom by itself and then when they get together they form a compound it's like sodium metal and chlorine gas, they get together and make a famous substance. What's that famous substance? You remember it? It's table salt. Ooh, that's nice. 
Okay, what's another uh, reaction that get to, things get together? Well, maybe carbon and oxygen. You know, uh, what we breathe out is carbon dioxide. <laughs> carbon dioxide right there. <laughs> carbon dioxide takes carbon and oxygen. When they get together, and the bond is not quite the same as the one for our stable salt. It's a little different. It's called covalent bond. There is some shared. Okay, so carbon dioxide form covalent bond. Okay, basically this is a nice idea to know. So bonding is important. Bonding is important. And it's, it's been around forever. Uh, people have been doing all kinds of things to get together, get together. All right? And that's important. That's important. All right, back to our story here. And let's see what we can do here. I know you're excited about fires, so I'm gonna bring the fire again uh, to you. So this time I'm gonna check out the, the, what happens in a car in a car. So let's put that down here. Uh, what I have here, remember I taught you, I, told, I talked about uh, it takes three things for a fire. So this is a container, it's got two metals here, the two nails actually, and these nails are actually, this is like a car. This is the, the cylinder of a car, these are the spark plugs. Interesting, interesting. All right, so we, uh, we have a fuel here, this is not gasoline by the way, we have fuel here, and we have oxygen from the air. And talking about oxygen from the air, 10 fingers, 10 fingers, eight parts of the air are nitrogen, and two parts of the air are oxygen. And you can see them, oh, you cannot see them, but they are really running around. They're, it's just a mix of two gases in the air, oxygen, nitrogen. Of course, there are minor things also present, but let's not worry about that. Okay, so how do we get these things to react, you say? Well, get the, the get fuel to burn. Well, we're gonna need a little <clears throat> fire of some sort. Did you say fire? Oh, yes. I have a fire here, right here. I have right here. I have a match. So we need, we have fuel, we have oxygen, we need a match. Here's a match. You don't believe me, I know. All right, let's try it. Ooh, ooh, yeah, this match is not working too well. So this is called grandpa match, actually. I have grandson and granddaughter match right here. Let's see what happens if we turn them together. Ah, we all need each other's help. Yeah. All right, for our experiment here, we're gonna just uh, use granddaughter <laughs> uh, to help us out in this one. So here it goes. So now when this happens here, when I light up this and touch the nail, the fuel will burn, gases will form, and carbon dioxide and water, and this little thing will, will fly up in the air with a lot of noise. Now, as I told you, I've been doing this presentation here in this room for the past 30 years, and actually I can see, hey, this is 2015, oh, this is 20, no, this is 1992. I see, <laughs> this thing hits the ceiling every year. There's a mark for me for this spark experiment. I know you like this part. So let's hope that we're gonna make the 2020 mark <laughs> in the ceiling here from this experiment. So we're gonna light up here. Now, there is a whole story about this. When we touch this thing, the gas is formed, loud noise happened, and this thing flies up in the air. Too loud. You have to protect your ears. How do you do that? You cover your ears. This is how we cover our ears, like this. Now, if you cover your ears like this, you're gonna flunk physics. Sorry. <laughs> now, this is how we cover our ears, got it? So we go like the elephant in the zoo. All right, well, that is wonderful. So let's do it. I'm gonna cover my ear and hold up this. Oh, I know it's hard for you to see the flame, but there is actually a flame. And we're gonna bring it to the, and then, and, hmm. Nothing has happening, nothing is happening. I put the flame next to the nail, nothing's happening. But wait, but wait. <laughs> you like that. In addition to these matches, I brought the zapper with me. Ooh. What is that stuff? This is called a Tesla coil. Now some of you are driving a Tesla car, electric car actually. Wow, it's the same guy who invented this one. And basically what it does, it produces a spark. Can you see the spark? Can you see the spark? You cannot see nothing. You cannot see anything. Here. So how about if we bring in the visualizer? Ooh, visualize quickly. All right, okay. So here's Mr. Visualizer. Now this is electricity. And this is metal and metal. Should I put my hand in here? Absolutely not. I don't want to hurt myself. 
as you do experiments, you always have somebody next to you, and you never, and study before you do the experiment, and always study well and know what's going on. Ask questions also, all right, before you do. No, I'm not gonna put my hand in here, I'm gonna put my hand in here, and we'll, okay, I don't know if you can see what's going on here, but I can see that the light is stopping at my hand. And we call this situation that I'm electrically grounded. Have you been grounded lately? Anybody here? No? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, let me ask you another question, yeah, because you're smart, I know, you're never grounded. What if I put my hand down here? Where, how far will the light go when I do this? I wonder, you think it will go up here? We'll go down here, go in the middle? Let's try it. So we can do a little hypothesis, it's okay knowing something and we can kind of deduce maybe and actually the light goes on up to my hand this is where i'm electrically ground so if this thing is working that's all what i was doing this for so it's proof to you that this is actually going to produce a spark and we're going to go places hopefully so cover your ears now cover your ears we're ready for the flying saucer here flying uh pom pom <laughs> flying pom pom only time to three one two three go whoa whoa oh well 2020 was okay, <laughs> but uh, and, and we're having fun. So this is important. Go ball. <laughs> All right. Well, that was a nice experiment to talk about reactions between fuel and oxygen in the air with the help of a little match. Okay. All right. So what else can we do here? Well, I'm glad you mentioned because I am ready for you. I'm ready for the cup here, right here. Let me gather my things here and get ready with the many things here, too many things here, that's all right. And we are almost there, salt is here, good, good. Uh, something stirred, okay, good. So here I am, here I am. I have this nice cup, this is just water, a little cup and water, no problem there. And we're gonna add some water to the cup and I'm gonna do something here that you say, wow, what's he doing, what's he doing, what's he doing? I'm going to add water to the cup, and then after that, I'm going to pour that water on top of my head. Boy, it's so warm in here, so I better get some cooling. But wait, I cannot do that. Mess up my hair. Mess up my hair. Oh, oh, you have an answer. I have an answer, too. I brought my elemental hat. Oh, yes, I know I look like Napoleon here a little bit. <laughs> you know Napoleon? Okay, that's a guy in, in France, right? That's France, Tennessee. No, that's Paris, Tennessee. Never mind. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's try that. So I'm gonna pour this in here, and I pour it on top of my head because I just like to do that. All right, so here it goes. So how do you know I pour water? Well, you're gonna see it. You're gonna see it going in there. And some of us will actually hear that, uh, that it went in there, made some noise. So here I am doing the, my pouring because I'm waiting to be showered. Hey, I like that. I like. Oh, I forgot to bring my soap. Sorry, sorry, guys, or my shampoo. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What happened? I don't, don't think anything happened here. I don't think anything happened. But in science, what do we do? We do the experiment one more time. We always repeat experiments because that's important. So, uh, and uh, and uh, since I really look silly with that hat, let me just remove it. Ah. I could use some cool air in a cup, some cool water actually. So let me do it again. So here's some more water. And everybody saw the water going in there. It's easy. I saw the water going in there. And I'm ready for it because I've been sweating here like crazy. <laughs> okay, so here it goes. Whoa. It's up there. Is it up there? I don't see anything. I don't feel anything. Uh oh. I know what happened, nothing happened. I know what happened, it's called, it's too hot in here, it evaporated. And because you are so kind to me, and you're just making this whole presentation nice and warm, and everything, the water evaporated. I don't see it, uh, what wait, what wait? Come on now, we saw the water going in there. Where did the water go? Well, it did evaporate apparently, or something, I don't know. So what if I do a little work on it here, bring my trash can here because I don't want to make a mess today, and bring a, uh, my uh, uh, poke a hole in there. What happens if I poke a hole? Well, I don't know. Maybe the water will come out. Water. Poke a hole. Nothing coming out. What's going on? There's no magic here. This is 
science here. Just go home, nothing water. Well, but then what if I use a little something here, like salt? Maybe it will help it. Salt, remember that sodium chloride, the ionic compound that I talked about? So here it goes, a little salt. And here, I put a little salt. It's all right. That's a lot of salt, but that's okay. And we're going to stir it up. So you got it always in my lab. You know, when you add things together, you know, make sure you stir them up. You're going to make sure you stir them up. And I don't know what you're seeing here, but I see there was a lot of water in there. And you said evaporation or so warm in here. No, no such thing. Guess what? I must have tricked you. I, I have. I have. Uh, in the cup there was a substance that soaked up the water. But let me, before I explain what's going on here, let me ask you, what do you use to that soaks up water in your house? Well, some of us have paper towel at home. That's nice, paper towel, paper towel. Some of us have a sponge. That's nice too. I use SpongeBob myself. You use SpongeBob? <laughs> All right. Some of us have things like a diaper. Ooh, diaper soaks up water? I think so. I think so. So, what's inside the diaper, I wonder? I tell you. And this is what was inside the cup, actually. This stuff inside the diaper was, in, in, inside the cup, sorry, was the, the diaper stuff, and it has a name. Sodium polyacrylate, a nice compound. Sodium polyacrylate, nice polymer. Ooh, we remember polymer. Remember the dolly, polymer, string, long string of uh, uh, molecules there, big molecule. Okay, so let us check out this polymer that does interesting things. So I'm going to put this as a live diaper demonstration for you. So I'm going to put some of this polymer stuff, and we are gonna uh, we're gonna need think of this as the diaper, and there is a powder stuff in there, the real stuff. We're gonna need a baby. Well, since I don't have a baby, I, uh, I was ready for this experiment here. Uh, and the baby's been drinking juice. And you know what happened after you drink juice? You produce pee pee. I brought some pee pee with me. All right, all right, all right. You're getting the wrong ideas here. Remember, I'm a chemist. This is just food color and water. If I were a biologist, maybe that person would bring the real stuff. I'm not responsible for that person. Sorry, I'm not. Okay, let's check out, see how the diaper works. And this is interesting to mm -hmm. see and learn about. One, so here's the white poly, uh, sodium polyacrylate, and here is the PP, which is, in my case, it's just water, food color and water, and here it goes, so the baby goes for the first time, and what happened after that? The baby always shakes their body. You know all babies shake their body. And what happened? There you go. This is how that works. So chemists have made these substances that help us in our daily life including the diaper stuff. Wow, a little while later, more juice brings in more pee-pee. And -pee. uh, right, let's see what we're gonna do with this, whether we're gonna have to change the diaper or not. Let me put it on top of the garbage can here. We don't want any accidents. <laughs> well, I guess what? This diaper is pretty holding on. It's pretty good, I like it. Now, you know what will happen after you, if you keep on adding. I don't have to show you that. All right, well, that was fun. That was fun to learn about. And we are ready for some more learning together. All right, so here we are with, 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 uh, we finished with the diaper. Wait a minute, but wait, but wait, there is more. The diaper stuff, I like the diaper experiment because it tells me a little bit about my hair gel here. What's the difference between, what do you notice about the hair gel and my, this is my hair gel, by the way. I never leave home without my hair gel. Uh, what's the difference between this one and this one? Just the looks of it, the looks of it. Let me bring this here so you can see that. Really nothing will happen, you know that. The two are stuck to the bottom. Do you think your favorite hair gel has actually the diaper stuff, sodium polyacrylate? The answer is yes. Wow, do I wear pee pee on my head? No, 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 no. It's just sodium polyacrylate, it doesn't have the urine or the pee pee. All right, so this is an interesting substance here. And one other thing about the use of this, uh, of, of, of this sodium polyacrylate, this substance, sodium polyacrylate, is right here. You go shopping for meat or something, there is always a little something uh, on the top of the uh, little uh, tray here. And what, you wonder what this is for. You got your chicken sitting here. 
What is this for? Why not to soak up blood and water? Guess what's inside that little thingy here? This is a diaper for the chicken. Yes. So yes, your chicken is sitting on a diaper at the store. <laughs> Isn't this fun? Yes, a lot of fun. All right. Well, we need to uh, move on to some other things here because we have we have so many things to share with you. And I'm gonna uh -oh, there. I'm gonna sh sh show you just one thing you can do at home quickly. This is fun. This is fun. Uh, I don't know how many of you actually have do, do any canning or candle candle making, uh, canning or candle making right here, and many other uses. This is called garlic wax, paraffin wax. And when I bought this paraffin wax here, it has four bars, four of them, one, two, three, four. And I decided uh, one of them was gray actually, so I decided to glue, glue. Hey, that's National Chemistry Week theme, glue and adhesive. I glued these two together. And uh, my son, he noticed something. Dad, the gray bar is at the bottom. I told him, Bob, you're a smart one. What, what do you need me to do? Help me, help me, help me. How do I, he doesn't like the gray at the bottom, he wants it at the top. So how do we get it at the top, you say? Son, he said, well, turn it over. So I turn it over for him, right here. And the gray is definitely at the top. No, the gray is not at the top. Uh-oh, let's do it again, because we get a repeat experiment. So here it is, uh-oh, the gray is still at the bottom. That's a mystery here. That's, that's a whole, definitely a mystery here. So what am I gonna do, what am I gonna do? I wonder what's going on. Can you do a little hypothesis on this? Uh, yeah, maybe it's the light. Oh, this light is hitting here by the time it gets there. It's dark. Have you ever stood in the sun versus under cloud? Which is brighter? Ooh. Or if you go deep sea diving, what do you see inside the ocean? Way deep, it's dark. Ah, oh, so this is kind of the same story. Now, but still we have not answered my son's request to get the gray at the top. So we need some help. It has something to do with light. So I brought myself a, a, a lighter here, a flashlight, and I'm gonna do this to you here. So here it is. When the light is from the top, the bottom looks dark. How about that? When the light is from the bottom, the gray goes at the top. How about that? So this is a fun experiment that you can do at home because we talk about all kinds of things. The, the paraffin, which is chemical, uh, to dig it, to, to get to paraffin, you get it from petroleum, which you have to dig, go to Jurassic Park, you know Jurassic Park, and dig for petroleum. <laughs> and the people who dig for petroleum are called geologists. And of course, when we talk about light, that's physics. So, uh, and Jurassic Park has living animals, what used to have living animals and plants, that's biology. They got biology, geology, chemistry, physics. This is a fun activity to do. All right, wonderful. All right, let's do some more fun activities uh, together. And this time, let's do some, let's do some colorful things. So we have uh, with us here another graduate cylinder. You remember the graduate cylinder story? <laughs> yes, and uh, the graduate cylinder story, this one, it looks like it has a purple color. Well, this is the, the other day it was raining, actually, and at the end of the rain, there was a rainbow in the sky. I reached out far away and got that rainbow and put it here. But at the end, it got, just showed me the purple color. Can I see the rainbow again? Yes, let's try it. And this time, we're gonna need the help of something called dry ice. Now, dry ice is, I talked about carbon dioxide before. Carbon dioxide it is a gas. But we can make a solid if we can freeze it, we can cool it, and we'll make a solid. So this is dry ice. Now I'm going to take a piece of dry ice and put it on the table, on this thing here. I know it's hard for you to see. Let me try it. Okay, here's a big one here. Here's a big one, dry ice. Now what is dry ice? Well, just think of your breath out. That's carbon dioxide. If I take that breath and lower the temperature, Freeze it, you end up with the solid. End up with the solid. Now, so this is solid carbon dioxide. Good. And what do we use dry ice for? Well, at this time of the year, you can use it for your Halloween party. You can take some dry ice and put some hot water on it. Ooh, you end up with a nice uh, vapor, uh, 
bubbling and, and, and it actually looks like a blob. Okay, now you can see that I'm kind of bouncing this between here and here. I'm not really holding on to it. <sighs> How cold is this dry ice? Well, it's about 70, 80 degrees here. Uh, think of zero. <sighs> this think of minus 100. <sighs> this is what this is. Very cold. So this is no fun to play with. It's, we can do fun things with it, but we're not gonna eat it. We are not gonna uh, just keep it on our skin because you end up with a frostbite, you're gonna end up in the hospital, which is not nice. So safety, important, important. I can't overemphasize that. So if we put the dry ice in here, maybe we'll get some reaction going. Uh, and here it goes. So we have purple. We're gonna go through the colors of the rainbow, we hope sometime soon. Oh, I see blue already. I see blue already. Do you see the colors? I see green now. I see green. I see yellow. I see yellow. I mean yellow. Wow, that was fantastic. Isn't that fun? So the rainbow is actually here. Now what's left after the yellow if it goes down? Roy G. Bin, by the way. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Let's look at my uh, lab coat. <laughs> Roy G. Bin. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. We were at the violet. We're going back to the yellow yellow and then we want to go to orange and red well it's not quite there so we need a little help uh, maybe we can give it a little hand by <coughs> uh, cheering it up can you, you almost cheer things sometimes go big orange you know maybe it will go yes well it's kind of orangey that's not too bad but i want it red <laughs> alabama is coming to town you know <laughs> so let's see if we can make it red Show Alabama our redness. Ooh, that's pretty neat. So let's take it back to the purple because we're gonna have some fun with this and we'll bubble through the rainbow color. So here's the purple, here's the green, here's the yellow. Unfortunately, to get the orange, we need to do a little work to get the orange and then the red. How about that? Was there a rainbow in here in this graduated cylinder? Yes, there is a rainbow. This is always fun to do that, always fun. And talking about dry ice, I want to do another one. Let me just keep it bubbling here. I'm gonna, oh, oh. I'm gonna use this dry, all right, dry ice, stay here. I'm gonna use this dry ice for an experiment here that is so fun, and uh, maybe you can do this sometime. Uh, two experiments, actually. So here is a, a bottle of water, a bottle of water. Looks like a bottle of water, nice. Let me put these guys here, and what am I doing with this one? All right, so I'm gonna put a piece of dry ice. What happens there? Help me out, help me out. Piece of dry ice, it's gonna bubble, bubble, bubble. Bubble, 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 bubble. Nice, nice bubble. So here's the fog I was talking about. But you can put hot water and get more foggy, actually. Remember this around Halloween. But be careful, dry ice is nothing to play with. You have to be careful, wear gloves, and pay attention, no eating. All right, so this is fun. So we can have this here, and you can have some fun with this. It looks very so fun. I like that. Little uh, little choo choo train or something. But wait, but wait. This is fun, but we need more fun. How do we get more fun out of this? And you know, I forgot something. This actually belongs in here. This belongs in here. It's part of this. How do we make it part of this? Well, we're gonna put it down and cover here. Put that together. That back together. Yeah, I forgot this. Sorry. I sometimes do that. <laughs> and we're gonna put it together here and we're gonna close it. And we'll just see what happens. I have no idea what will happen. I'm as surprised as you are. Oh fountain, fountain, look at that, look at that. Uh oh, I'm making a big mess here, but hopefully. Isn't this fun? Oh stop, stop. Okay, how do I stop? I am screwed. How do I get it back out? Oh, well, this is going to barely sink right out of water. So, you can have some fun with dry ice. This is fun. This is clean, good, safe, fun. All right? Not touching a dry ice, no eating dry ice. Minus 100 degrees. That's pretty cold, and you can again really cause all kinds of problems. I know you want to see this one more time, so let me get another bottle here because you're so interested in that, so let me see. Here is a bottle, quickly, quickly. And here is another piece of, uh, of dry ice, and let it go. And here we're gonna just put this one and have fun with it. Okay, so I had the little piece that was missing from the other one. I'm gonna pour it here. Guess what will happen again? 
Nu-l fante. Wo, 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 wo. Ok, you know this outdoors, by the way. It looks like my indoor activity here is not too many. <laughs> uh, good, but uh, just you do this outdoors, you're gonna have fun. All right, so remember, so that's, you, some of you have these water bottles that have this little thing in here, and you, you put it there, you know, maybe come in with a loop or something. So that is uh, my uh, dry acid. Oh, but wait, there's one more of dry acid. It's so fun. Let me bring it over here, because this one, we're gonna see some bubbles forming. And you like bubbles, so it's just stay put, stay, stay, stay there. Don't go away, don't go away. Here it is. Whoa. So, we have seen, we have seen what happens when you put uh, dry ice in water. It's simple, I'm gonna hold it very fast here, quickly, quickly, go and go in there. Okay, I'm kind of too big, that's okay, no. Keep going, keep going. Sorry, we're getting there, we're getting there. Stay there. Okay, you are there. Good, I think this is probably enough. You know, we can produce more, but let's. So, what happens here if I oh, put this cap in? What did happen here? Look at this. Same story happened here. Well, that's not fun. It's okay. It's okay, but it's not too fun. So, what if we have a little soap? This is soap here. Ah! All right, it gets too, too hard to open. Okay, I got a little soap here, and if I do this carefully here, I'm gonna pour it inside the soap, and I want you to observe some things. Maybe we'll observe some things. We hope to observe some things. <laughs> we are working together now. Come on now, don't, don't do that. Nothing is happening here, whoa. Sometimes experiments don't go the way you, you plan them, which is all right. But I've done this for the past 30 years. I've done this 30 years. Look at that. It's working. Oh, oh I'm, getting, I'm getting soap all over the floor. And next thing you know, I'm going to be <laughs> skiing here. Skating, I guess. Let me put it over here. Now, let me try to catch this ball. Catch, catch one of these. Uh oh, all right. I'm going to try. It's getting messy here, but that's okay. Okay, sometimes these things, maybe if you have a little wet, 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 is wet, something, what is wet? I'm gonna wet my, ooh, okay, stay there, stay there. Wet my, let's see if it that will catch the, the bubble. Ah, I got it, I got the bubble. One more bubble, look at that, look at that fun. Whoa, look at that fun, look at that fun. So you can do, Things with dry ice. The ice has water and put a little soap. This is what we get. Is this fun? Yeah, it's fun. A lot of fun. All right. So we'll 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 move from the dry ice business into something even cooler than that. Colder than that. Dry ice, as I told you, is what minus a hundred degrees. Well, I just happen to have with me here. Not just uh, remember what I told you about air. Air is two, two parts oxygen and eight parts nitrogen. Ooh, nitrogen. We have some liquid nitrogen here, and we need to really pay attention to that. And, uh, and, and, and we're going to do something with it right now. Wait. Okay, let me remove these. And then it's so cold that as soon as I pour it in this container, which is called a doer, a doer, by the way, was somebody's last name, doer. <laughs> And this is called a doer, which is basically an insulated uh, container. is 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 uh, is interesting. It's, it's, uh, we can pour it in here. What happens? Liquid nitrogen. All right, come in here. As soon as this is very minus three hundred degrees, it's going into eighty. Mm, much like when you have a stove, put a little water on your hot stove. What happens to the hot stove if you have electric stove? Shh, you're gonna boil right away. So here is the situation with dry uh, liquid nitrogen and the hot stove over here. What happens? Looks like it's boiling to me. Looks like it's boiling to me. Well, let's have some fun with it. Again, this is minus 300. You don't want to really touch that stuff at all. And we're gonna do a little fountain. <laughs> That's a little fountain right there. This is nice. Now, 
In a minute here, you may notice something, may notice something, that the flow of this uh, steam, which is not really steam, just condensed water vapor, uh, is going to slow down. Why is it slowing down? Well, the other part of the rubber band here, rubber tubing here, is getting so cold that it's not helping the thing go. Okay, if you tap this one here, didn't freeze. Tap this part here, you can hear the difference, can't you? Oh boy, that is hot. That is not hot. That's Okay, while this is going here, I'm gonna put another rubber tubing here. This one is flexible. What happens when things cool down? What happens in winter time? Coming up, it's very cold outside. What do you do? You do this, you kind of get, get the, uh, uh, you, 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 you do uh, this all the time, right? Well, this is flexible here. Let's see what happens when we put it in the cold stuff. We'll just leave it here for a while. And while we're doing that, let me try to clean up on R5 here. Uh, don't worry. Uh, basically, put some paper towel. Yeah. So while this is going, let's get another uh, setup here with, with, with a, a balloon. This is a, called a filter flask, it's got a side arm, and I'm gonna fill it with liquid nitrogen, fill it a little bit with liquid nitrogen, and guess what after that? I'm gonna cap it and hold it in my hand with the glove, because it gets too cold actually, extremely cold to my, for my hand, and we shall see what happens to the balloon. What do you think will happen to the balloon when the liquid nitrogen becomes gas nitrogen? All right, all right, let's come down here. Liquid nitrogen, come on down. All right, we may have enough. Let's test it, test it, test it. So put that down and test it. Cover, 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 cover. What happened? What happened? I'm not ready yet. I got my gloves on. Okay, I hope it doesn't disappear. Ah, it looks like it's winding down here. Let's, let's try again. Okay, we got some juice in it. Let, let me put some more. Put some more dry liquid nitrogen, and we shall see what happens. Quickly. Okay. Okay, just my microphone. That's okay. We got it. Okay, we'll do it again. Don't worry. Okay, I'm sure you can hear me now. Let's do it again one more time. It's getting cool. Okay. All right. Quickly. Let the balloon go. Go, go, go. Go, 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 go. So how far is it going to go? Cover your ears, cover your ears, cover your ears. What do you think will happen after a little while? <laughs> this balloon will pop with a loud noise. If not, I'm just gonna get uh, something to pack, poke it in there. Come on. Boy, that balloon is really strong. Yeah, I'm just gonna hold it here. I'm sure it can. How about, uh, uh, I don't want to pop it, but come on, you can do it. <laughs> All right, you got it. Boy, it took a little work, but that's okay. All right, well, that was fun. That was fun. Loud noise is fun. <laughs> so you be careful with this. Okay, well, let's, let's uh, try to see what's left on the table here. Whoa, you got too many things on the table there. Too many. No, we have just a few things left actually. And if, uh, 
we witnessed, you know, today is uh, Monday, the 19th of October. But there is a special day coming up. It's called the 23rd of October. 23rd of October. And 23rd of October, which is the, October is the 10th month of the year. And 23rd, okay, this gives me some ideas already. Uh, the, everybody will be celebrating special uh, day on the 23rd of October. From 6 or 2 in the morning to 6 or 2 at night. 6 or 2 in the 10 and 23rd. Hey, that reminds me of that this is Avogadro's number. This is the mole. This is what's in one mole of anything. One mole of anything has six and bunches of zero, 23 zeros, 22 zeros. Wow, of stuff. For example, for example, if I tell you that I have these two cans here, two cans, I have two cans, that's not, a, that's not a bird, two cans, two cans of aluminum cans, they weigh about 27 grams. You know that 27 grams <coughs> is in one mole of aluminum? Hmm. And how many atoms are in there? I just told you a second ago, six and a lot of zeros. 20, six times 10 to the 23, I know, 10 to the 23 uh, atoms of aluminum in here. Can you imagine? Can you imagine that? Wow, two cans, two cans of soda. The aluminum cans have this many atoms in them. That's a big number. Okay, now a mole of anything has that number of atoms. It's called Avogadro's number. It's not avocado number, avocado number. <laughs> All right, and talking about moles, I'm sure some of you have mole problems, and you know what moles are, really, in life. This is a mole. <laughs> this is a mole. You like my mole? You like my mole? This is, this is fun. Mole. Uh, mole is, is, a, is, is actually an underground animal that does all kinds of trouble down there, <laughs> as far as, uh, and then, but but the, we chemists use the word mole. Mole comes kind of you think about molec molecule, molec mole, okay. And uh, in some schools, and in my school when I was younger, just a couple of years ago, <laughs> uh, I was asked by my teacher in high school to to make a mole. So I made this mole here. I got an F for this one. Sorry, not a good one. <laughs> Didn't like it. Okay. Then I went back to the teacher a couple of days later and said, well, here is my mole, right here. What do you think of that? And the teacher said, you get an A. And man, yes, and I got an A on this one. Now, I happen to actually name this mole special uh, Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> Some of you know that actress, late, she died a long time ago. And this is her, by the way. Some of you may remember her, Mac Marilyn Monroe. Isn't that a fun activity to do at school? Yes, it sounds silly, but, uh, but it's actually fun and you learn a lot. About, so October 23rd, from 6 or 2 in the morning to 6 or 2 at night, it's called Mall, National Mall Day. Celebrate everything more. <laughs> okay, guacamole, mole, <laughs> etc., etc., etc. There are many, many possibilities for more. Okay, well, uh, it uh, looks like that we are ready for some real celebration. I mentioned to you that that uh, that uh, that uh, this is my thirtieth anniversary, thirtieth year annual uh, presentation, and uh, when I came to UT in 1991, uh, Dr. John Bloor. He passed away recently, uh, was here, and we did this presentation together, actually, uh, first year in my uh, UT. And along the way, also Dr. Don Kleinfelder. Uh, so I really wanna, uh, was also uh, always attending my presentations, always enjoying them, uh, and uh, his wife, and kids, actually. <laughs> uh, everybody brought their kids over the years, uh, the professors and other people from campus, from around campus, from as far as Morristown, as far as uh, Oak Ridge and other places. Uh, so I really wanted to dedicate this show to uh, my former colleagues, uh, former now deceased colleagues, Dr. John Bloor and Dr. Don Kleinfelder. Here's to you. 
All right. So uh, Dr. Bloor was interesting because at the end of every show, and from then on, at the end of every show, we would have uh, this uh, special bright light here uh, that really is sparking up the whole auditorium, so to speak. It's called, they're called fireworks. And I just wanted to show, what do we have here? All right, looks like there is something coming in here. Serious, oh, it's a cake for me. Wow, serious anniversary. But where is the fireworks, I wonder? So let us light up the fireworks here together and in, 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 in honor of Dr. John Glor and also Dr. Clint Hunter. And here it goes, and let's continue the celebration. Yay, may we keep learning more and more and more. Of course, may it could be. Okay, here we go. And more and more and more. Okay, music. Come on, light up, go for it. And we'll always play this song with when we do the fireworks. <laughs> Thank you, thank you all, thank you all. This is a lot of fun. And many, many more. There he is, and many, many more, yes.